All right, in this video, I'm gonna cover the Dubsado new form builder, which should be in all of your accounts. You should have this little line here. And we can keep using the old one until January 31st, but it's time to make the switch. So I'm gonna show you all the new things about the new form builder and give you all my thoughts on this. So let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer, and I love to teach people how to start and grow creative businesses. Um, a big part of that is having a good client management system, and I use Dubsado for my invitation clients every single day in my business. If you're new here and you want to get started with Dubsado, I am a certified Dubsado specialist, so you can get 30% off with my link or the code designed by Lainey. I'll put the link in the description. All right, so my thoughts on this form builder are actually that it's the first Dubsado thing. Like when I started betaing it, my first feedback was it doesn't feel like Dubsado. And I still believe that even though they have made improvements and changes. I'm not saying it's difficult or clunky. I think you'll see what I mean, but it doesn't kind of feel like Dubsado. I understand why they did it. I think it's going to be better for future improvements in the future. It's giving you more customization. And then there's one part of it that I think is a little bit more functional. The forms in Dubsado were not broken. They were not clunky. They were not difficult to use. So this was not something where we were begging for this. Um, some of you may have been. I don't know. But I think people just wanted a little bit more customization. And this is providing that to a certain extent. So this is not like fixing a problem. It's more just kind of adding some features and customization. So let me show you what this day of items questionnaire looked like before. Um, we have all the options here. Drag and drop. Um, when you go into edit a text box, you get this little pop-up and you can edit here on the right. Awesome, great, working totally fine. So when you turn on the new form builder, let's look at what this looks like. And I'm gonna go into the settings really quick and just turn off, you'll see legacy mode is on. I'm gonna turn legacy mode off. You'll see why in a few minutes. All right, so here is where we're at with the new form builder. The, most difficult thing for me is switching from the right side of the screen to the left. This is, of course, something we'll get used to, but it feels so different and it feels a little bit confusing. <laughs> I'm going to move my face so we can see all the options. What you'll see here is basically all the same things we were seeing previously, um, except for this container box. That's pretty much the only new thing. I think the project tracking might be new too. But the container is mostly the new thing. So all of this customization is adding to the container with within which you put all the other elements. So think of this kind of like columns in the previous form builder, um, but it's got a lot more capabilities. So right here we have just an image, and if you click on it, instead of that box popping up on the right, we have this pop up on the left, but it's not over the rest of our screen. So we can edit it while still kind of scrolling through everything else um, and change this image, do whatever we need to do here. With text, this is great. If you click edit inline, you can just add new typing, change things, etc., without that box popping up. So I think that is really adding to the functionality because it wasn't like we were annoyed with the boxes popping up, but this is a little bit easier. This is a little bit nicer. And then if you click on one of these questions, you can edit all the settings over here. You can also edit the text of the question inline, which I do really love. And I think it switches back and forth kind of seamlessly between this option and in the individual settings. Now this area where I have columns has changed containers. So let's show you what those settings look like. And there's so many. A few of these settings will not be available to you if you don't turn that legacy option off in the settings of the form like I did. So you just go here and click it. And if these are grayed out, it will actually tell you right here why and you can go and do that so as usual you can choose the number of columns and you can choose to show the title or not but what you might not be used to is changing the container width which can be a little bit wider than it used to and then you can also change i think we're around 90 and then you can also change the content width within the container which i really love um, you can also use these settings down here to put in padding and margins and then something that i think you'll really enjoy is being able to change the background color of the container. So this is really getting into that portion of which things are elements within the container and which settings apply to the container itself. And I think this is the biggest difference between the form builder and the legacy one. You can also do a background image. So I'll just click on this and see. I mean, this is going to be terrible, but up here it would be really nice. So right now we just have an image. That's it. It's just an image of my logo with a white background. What we could do instead if this was a container is we could put a background image on the container and then put text over it. So when we add a container, let's see, it's still drag and drop like it used to be. 
And when we add a container and we edit those settings, we can put in a background image and then we can put elements on top of it, including other images, other containers, anything else that you have over here. So we could then just put a text box on top of this. Pretty cool and edit all of the settings for all of these different uh, elements inside the container as well as editing the elements for the container separately. So obviously that one was hideous. We're not gonna save that. This is not great. Um, we'll change it to a background color, not an image. It's still not great, but it's a little less terrible. So I think you can see the amount of new customization that you can do with this container feature. Um, and you can see how the new form builder is going to work. I think the biggest functional thing is just the editing inline. Um, and then as far as customization and just aesthetics, you can do those container settings. Just one more thing I wanna show you is if you are a little bit comfortable with getting slightly more complicated, dealing with coding, but you don't actually have to code anything, I'm able to do it. Um, I do have a video on something called Dubbins, which is these Dubsado plugins, and you can purchase them. And I'm gonna show you just an example of how much customization you can do with this. I think the new form builder is trying to get closer to that because they realized that so many people were wanting to customize their forms further, uh, but it's not, you'll see it's not anywhere close to it. So this is what I can do with Dubbins, and you can see this is light years away from anything we do even with the new form builder. So you'll see this is a scrolling image. Um, these are just beautiful social icons with links. We have our custom fonts. Um, we've got down here, I wanna make sure I show you like this accordion for an FAQ. When I click on it, a bunch of code comes up. <laughs> but you can see um, just how cool and functional this is. This is a review slider that will change every few seconds, um, next steps, buttons, a footer, etc. So there's so many things you can do if you're willing to take it a little bit more complicated. Um, I have a video on that that I'm gonna link in the corner if you want to check those out. But for right now, I hope you see the new features of the form builder and how you can use those to make your forms look a little bit more customized. I'm also curious your thoughts on the form builder and how you feel about it. Do you kind of agree with me that it doesn't feel like Dubsado a little bit? Not to say that it's not completely functional and seamless. Um, it just felt a little bit like incongruent with the rest of the system when I first started looking at it. But I love the editing of text inline and I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the new form builder way before January 31st, I'm gonna go ahead and start so that I'm able to kind of get over that learning curve of switching from the left side of the screen to the right side and back and forth and all the new things. And I recommend that you go ahead and switch over. I don't want you to be hit on January 31st with a huge learning curve. So go ahead and start kind of switching. You can always switch back if you're not sure how to do something. Um, and I hope that this video helped you see all the different features that you can use in the new form builder. So while you're here, check out a bunch of our other Dubsado videos on this playlist. And if you have any questions, let me know what you want to see in the comments. If you do decide to join Dubsado for the first time, please use our code designed by Lainey or the link in the description so that you can get 30% off your first month or year. Thank you, everybody.